studio for, uh, is hard for singers because, number one, it requires precision. And yes, you can fly, you can fix pitch, you can fix EQ, you can fix rhythm, move it a little bit or whatever. But I'm sure that you'll all agree with me, the better the vocal you can get before all the fixing begins, the more natural that thing is going to sound. And unless you're on purpose doing a pop thing that needs to sound like a machine, you want it to sound natural, you know, and reach the heart of the audience. Okay? Number two, the audience is missing. Okay? The audience is missing, the, meaning the listener. The great songwriter Michael Clark said to me one time, and I always give him credit because I love this line, if you sing like you're singing to thousands of people, you can't reach anyone. If you sing like you're singing to one person, you can reach thousands. So they have to know, and there's, we're going to talk about psychology, they have to know who they're singing to, and guess what? It's usually not you. And that's who they're usually singing to. Time is money, but careers are at stake, even for a song demo. So that's another reason studio is hard. It demands all this precision, but you know, it's got a time factor to it usually. And also, too often, the vocal booth is set up in such a way, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time I've ever walked into a studio and, and, went to, and gone to the booth, it was set up wrong for, for, be, for the best singers. I'm getting a nod there. <laughs> so, and it's, it's, a, it's a simple fix. I'm going to show you that later. But it's one of the most important things you can do to ensure success for your client. I'm going to give you, as my husband said, I'm going to give you a little, little bit of a vocal lesson here because you need to know some anatomy to understand why I'm going to suggest certain things, okay? The breath, of course, is enabled by the diaphragm. But the problem with knowing that is that if you sing from here, you will, which is where the diaphragm is connected, at the bottom of the rib cage, all the way around, it's dome shaped and, and its edges are connected to the bottom of the rib cage. If you sing from there, guess what's going to happen? That. Now, what that's going to do to your client's vocal control is lose it. Why? Because this is the bottom of the rib cage. When the ribs come in, or the ribs aren't stretched out, you got too much play in the diaphragm there, and you can just, uh, it's, not, it's uncontrolled air, okay? And vocal control is the secret to the universe as far as this vocal is concerned. So what can they do? Something that will cause the rib cage to spread and stay spread without freezing. All right, just know that. We're going to get to how you do that. Have them eat a lean protein breakfast. How many people have had clients come in that just had donuts? Yeah, no. <laughs> That uh, causes energy, but it causes a spastic energy that becomes high energy instead of a steady source of energy that, that's, that comes from the pelvic floor. If you find that client consistently, like not being able to visually focus, uh, that you can close your eyes and visually focus. I think you know what I'm talking about, where it just looks like they're looking around at everything or just not, they're not really present with that communication. They're just rehearsing. Put a little spot on the wall. This guy, I had it, he ended up drawing eyeballs. And, and put it at a distance where the client is looking, or just, just a big old dot or something. Have them sing to that point like it's alive.